Did you know you can repurpose glass jars to store dry goods for your long-term storage? Hi, I'm Jonathan. And Kyleen Jones, and we are the Provident Preppers. Glass is an ideal storage container, both for bottling your home preserves, as well as for bottling some of your dry goods, both for short-term and long-term storage. In our house, we go through a lot of pickle jars and peanut butter jars, and it seems like such a waste for them just to end up in the landfill. So we fill them with our dry goods and store them in our pantry. That's right. In this video, we will teach you how you can use both mason jars and repurposed glass jars to store your dry goods. Today we will talk about packaging dry goods in glass bottles. There are definitely some advantages to storing your dry goods in glass. First of all, glass creates a true oxygen barrier and it's durable and can be reused many times. There's no leaching that occurs, it's inexpensive, and glass is so easy to clean thoroughly. It's moisture proof and it's rodent proof. Unless of course the rat knocks it on the ground and breaks it open, then it's no longer rodent proof. These are some beautiful antique canning jars that I have that I always store the dry goods in just because they're pretty and decorative. And you can see they are very old and have lasted for many, many years. And there are a few disadvantages to glass. Obviously the first being that they are fragile. Uh, they can be easily broken, so it's important that you protect them. They are a bit heavier than other packaging methods, and they don't provide any protection from light. And light does degrade your food, so that is certainly a consideration. When we talk about candidates for long-term food storage, we're talking about those dried goods that can be stored for 25 to 30 years and still be good to eat. These foods are always low in moisture and low in oil. On the screen, you can see some of the items that you might want to consider for long-term food storage. When it comes to shelf life, whole grains will store longer than any type of milled product. For instance, wheat stores a lot longer than white flour, but here we are filling up a jar with white flour because it's good to have some white flour in our short-term food storage where we'll rotate through that within three to five years. Whole corn stores longer than cornmeal, rolled oats store longer than oat flour, and dry beans store longer than bean flour. Whenever possible, store the dry good in its original form just to extend that shelf life. Now I do package foods that are high in moisture or oils in glass canning jars, but these are for my short term food storage. Remember that three to five years? You'll notice I have sesame seeds and pumpkin seeds, there's coconut there, and even some dried leeks. All of those I need to rotate through. I would never store those with an oxygen absorber. Storing foods that are high in moisture or oils in a low oxygen environment can create an atmosphere where you might grow botulism. So you would never put an oxygen absorber in with these types of foods. But they're perfectly fine and helpful in foods that are low in moisture and low in oil. The first step is to select the right glass jar. These jars must have lids that create an airtight seal. They must not be chipped or cracked, and they must be easy to clean and sanitize or sterilize. Mason jars are my favorite. I literally have thousands of mason jars, and they are perfect for storing dry goods. As for me, I'm a huge fan of Adam's peanut butter, so we accumulate a bunch of these peanut butter jars. Rather than throw those in the trash, we find a way to repurpose those to store food. And you can see a whole variety of other jars here that we do as well. It is critically important that you start with clean jars and lids. So we're gonna talk about some of the ways that you can ensure that your jars and your lids are squeaky clean. From my experience, the lids are the weak point and they are the place that has the potential to grow your bacteria and your molds and just get nasty. So we wanna pay really special attention to those lids. Use hot soapy water and scrub them out then either sterilize them or sanitize them before use. The lid on the right really should not be used for storing food. I'm not sure you could do anything to make that clean enough to do it again. I just throw it away and move on to a different bottle. When I grabbed some bottles out of the storeroom for this video, I noticed that 
some of them had not been cleaned as well as they should have before being put away in storage. That's the best time to do it when you initially remove that food from them before they've sat for a while. So to make sure that these lids were really clean, I just dumped straight chlorine bleach in each lid and I let it set for a half an hour and you could see how any mold that was in there suddenly started to kind of disappear. And that was my way of trying to make sure that these lids were just incredibly clean. If your lid's clean, you don't have to do this. It's just one way of taking a dirty lid and maybe salvaging it. You can sanitize bottles and lids the same way that you would sanitize dishes by just putting a couple of teaspoons of chlorine bleach with one gallon of water and soak it for at least two minutes and then air dry it. The reason it needs to air dry is because that continues to allow the bleach solution to have contact with that surface and do its job. Or probably the easiest is just to sanitize them in the dishwasher. Another way to really make sure that your bottles are clean is to sterilize them using heat. Now, most yeasts and molds are heat sensitive and destroyed by heat treatments at temperatures of 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. When I want to heat sterilize my jars, I just put them in an oven 250 degrees and leave them in there for a little while, 15 minutes or so, and then take them out after they've had a chance to be completely heated through. And that will kill just about anything that could possibly be living on them. Another method that's super easy and doesn't take any energy or heat up the kitchen is to just put them in my sun oven. When I purchase this container of old fashioned rolled oats, I can realistically get a shelf life of two to three years just by taking this container and putting it on the shelf in my pantry. If I take those same rolled oats and put them into the glass canning jar with an oxygen absorber, suddenly that two to three year shelf life changes to a 25 to 30 year shelf life and I can ensure that there won't be any growth of insects during that period of time. This is a picture of a bag of split peas. It's just looking up from underneath after we remove some of the split peas. That's what can happen when you don't treat for insects because most of the dry goods that you bring home from the store will have some form of insect or eggs in them. It's just what happens. And so we just want to make sure that they don't get a chance to multiply and destroy my food. One really great way to package that food in glass jars is to use a vacuum sealer. Most vacuum sealers come with these attachments or you can purchase these attachments to allow you to use either wide mouth or regular mouth jars. But this only works on standard mason jars. Remember how we discussed the difference between long-term and short-term storage? This is hot cocoa. Even though I'm packaging it in a jar that has been vacuum sealed, I'm still never going to get a 25 to 30 year shelf life because it's hot cocoa. But once it is packaged in these jars, I can easily get a 10 year shelf life. Another great way to do this is by the use of oxygen absorbers. Obviously, oxygen absorbers take that oxygen away so that insects cannot live or multiply. It also improves the quality of the food and it prevents any growth of aerobic pathogens. And this works for all styles of jars. When we use this method, we like to put the oxygen absorber right in the bottom of the jar and then fill the product on top. It will work the other way around. It's just easier to do it that way. If you're packaging sugar or salt, do not use an oxygen absorber. It tends to just make it a hard brick. And remember, you never use an oxygen absorber with any foods that are high in moisture or fats. So don't put them in granola or raisins or anything like that. Oxygen absorbers should solely be used with low moisture, 10% or less, and low oil foods. Another method that you might want to consider is the freeze thaw method. Now you can package the dry goods in your bottles and then put them in the freezer and continue with this method that way. But due to the expansion, sometimes the bottles will break and make a mess. So my preference is to use the freeze thaw method before pouring it all into the bottles. This method is super simple. You just place the beans or grain or the dry good in a moisture proof packaging. The container of oats I placed in a bread bag and taped that shut. I put some of the smaller bags inside gallon Ziploc bags. Whatever you need to do to make sure that 
the contents inside your bag is protected from the moisture in the freezer and then freeze for at least three days if you forget about it for a week that's great don't worry about it you will need to freeze any bags of food that are 15 pounds or larger for more than that three days and then place them on your counter for 24 hours or more this tells the eggs that it's springtime and it's time for them to hatch and then once those insects are hatched you refreeze for three days or so and that will kill them in that stage. It takes a few cycles of the freeze thaw to kill insects at all stages of development. And one caution, make sure that you bring the food back up to room temperature before you package it to ensure that you don't get any moisture into those jars because moisture is our enemy when it comes to storing foods. Then you just take the dry goods and you pour them into the jars, fill them up all the way to the top. And of course, using a funnel is usually a lot easier, especially for those jars with small necks. Make sure that you wipe the rim of the jar clean to make sure there's no debris that'll keep the seal from being complete. And put the lid on tight. And then make sure you label that product with the contents and the date. We should point out that you only need to use one of these methods, either the freeze-thaw method or the oxygen absorbers or the vacuum sealing. You don't need to use more than one of those methods. And now a huge warning. We've given you some really good safe methods for preserving dry goods in glass jars. However, there is one method that is being promoted that is absolutely not safe and we are begging you to avoid it. It's dry canning. I always put a lot of research into any content that we produce to make sure that it is safe and that it we're giving out really good advice. I had a really hard time finding good information on dry canning. And finally, I came across Elizabeth Andress. She is a professor and extension food safety specialist, and she is very much opposed to dry canning. I will leave a link in the description. Always look in the description of our videos because we put valuable information in there, but I will leave a link to this entire article that she has written on dry canning. A couple of the main points of it is that the dry oven process used at home has never been shown to sterilize these various dry foods or produce claimed extended shelf life with quality. So first of all, it doesn't work. Then second, this heating could even make the quality of some foods worse and it can actually cause rancidity to occur. A major manufacturer of canning jars and lids in the United States does not support the use of their jars and lid sealing compound in this manner. I do not use dry canning method. I know some people do and that it works for them. However, I'm never going to do anything knowingly to put my family at risk. The reason why I prep is to keep my family safe. We have given you three really good ways to preserve your food in canning jars. How about just choose one of them instead of choosing one that could be risky? After you've gone to all this work, you wanna make sure that you protect that jar and the product that's in it. We wanna make sure it's stored in a cool, dry, dark place. And if you live in earthquake country like we do, make sure that you protect those jars. I like to take my old socks and cut off the bottoms and use the tops as a way to cushion those jars on the shelves. This is my beloved bottle room. I think these are actually jars, but I call them bottles. I've put first strip guardrails on to keep the jars from coming off. And you can also see some of the jar socks. As we plan and prepare, our family wants to be in a position where we are able to share with those in need. These smaller repurposed jars that we filled with beans or rice are just the perfect size to be able to share with someone in need. Isn't she cute? This is the reason we do what we do. We want to make sure that you can build your family food stores and take care of your family. I'm gonna challenge you here and now to take a step towards accomplishing that goal. You don't have to eat the whole elephant at once. Break it down, take small steady steps, and you will get there. We encourage you to visit the Provident Prepper. We've written a post entitled, Packaging Dry Foods in Glass Bottles for Long-Term Food Storage. Much of the information in this video came from that post and if you go and visit it, you can learn a lot more. We also created two really good videos about packaging your food storage. The first one is plastic bottle food storage where we teach you how to use peat bottles that you normally would just throw away to package your food storage for both long-term and for short-term. 
The other video is on packaging food in Mylar bags for long-term storage. In this video, we go into great detail about exactly how to package it both in liners inside of a plastic bucket and in smaller packages, as well as how to vacuum seal Mylar bags. This video would be really worth your time to watch. Check them out. You got this. You can build your family's food supply by simply repurposing glass jars that you normally would have thrown away. Every time you go to the market, simply pick up an extra bag of white rice, dry beans, pasta, or rolled oats, and package it in the jar. Then store it in a cool, dry, dark location and protect it from earthquakes. A full pantry brings so much peace of mind, especially during challenging times. And now for the questions of the day. What experience do you have packaging dry goods in glass? And what advice do you have for our viewers? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.